Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ace coming to you with War World of Tanks. Today we are going to be looking at a brand new tank just introduced this month, the M56 Scorpion. Okay. The M56 Scorpion. Now this tank was actually developed. It was developed in 1953, if I remember correctly, and houses a 106 or no 106 what am I talking about a 90 millimeter gun this tank was to be used as a lightweight self-propelled tank gun that was to be dropped by parachute or glider it was made by Cadillac Motor Car Division of the General Motors and was made from 1953 to 1959 it was you know okay but, you know, it saw service for a bit, but it was replaced by the M551 after the Vietnam War, or during the Vietnam War in 1959. Now, that's the real-life tank. What is this tank like in World of Tanks? Well, as you can see, it is tiny. And I mean tiny. Let's compare it to a Tier 3 light, the LTP. I mean, look at that. It's about the size of a tier 3 light tank. I mean, hell, just... I mean, hell, it's tinier than an M3. Now, it has 820 hit points, which is... okay for a tier 7 tank destroyer. If, if we were to look at the rest, if we go to the detector here... If we go to the detector here... T25-2, 850. T25-AT, 840. The British. Tier 7. The AT7. Heavily armored. 12, 1250. But I mean, I don't think all, all of them are going to get that, of course. Let's look at the Russians. If you're wondering why my research tree looks different, I use the Aslan's mod. This is part of the mods. The SU-152. 870. 830 for the SU-100M. So outside the British and the Germans who have super heavy tank destroyers, like the Jag Panther, um... It's it's on the lower scale, but it's still decent. It only weighs 7.41 tons right now. That's not without me putting my stuff on it yet. This tank is absolutely light. Anything you even touch a heavy tank, you will start taking literal constant one damage. This tank... It's it's a glass cannon to the max. For real. It's like they took a butt, a car, cut it in half, put a little on armor on top, and then attached the gun to the top. Because as you can see in the tracks, those are four actual pneumatic wheels. It has 200 horsepower engine. And you're like, oh, it just has a 200 horsepower engine. That's a weak engine. Well, considering the the weight of the tank, that gives it a horsepower to ton ratio of 28. This thing is ridiculous when it comes to getting to speed and climbing hills. Also, its top speed is 45 kilometers per hour, or 28 miles per hour for you, for the Americans. So, it's not the fastest tank, but it can get up there. And its traverse speed is 40 degrees a second. So, I mean, this thing will not get you can just easily keep turning with the tank that's trying to get around you. Now, the one thing about though is it only has one hull armor everywhere. It only has one millimeter of armor. So, AG loves this tank. Artillery love this tank. It will get hit and it will get hurt. The main things I notice the gun gets knocked out. Or the engine gets knocked out. The ammo rack, as you can clearly see, is right there. In the back. So you gotta get hit in the back to get ammo racked. But the engine is right here in the front. So getting hit here will most likely knock out your engine, set you on fire. Getting hit up here knocks out your gun, which sucks. Now, it's... So, it's okay. I mean, it has... 500 single signal range, which isn't great. Um, it's actually pretty bad, but it's, it makes doable. Uh, 
a 600 horsepower engine. Now here's where this thing shines. The gun. Now let's look at the other tier... I have another tier 7 premium tank destroyer, the E25. Known for being OP as hell, but there's one downside to it. The gun. The gun on the E25 is the 7.5 centimeter Pac-42 L70 used on the Stug. I mean, if you look at it, it's right, fire 20 rounds a minute. It, it's shooting around every two and a half, about two seconds. But look at its penetration. That's just terrible. Though, it does have great accuracy and great aiming time. But, the DPM of this gun, which this it says right here, its DPM is 2700. It will never do that much damage in a minute because most of your shells will bounce in this tank. The Scorpion, on the other hand, has a fantastic 90mm M54 gun. Now, this thing doesn't shoot as fast, only at 7.69 rounds per minute, and with the gunner hammer, it's... let's put my crew in real quick. Turn crew to vehicle. Where's my gunner hammer? I don't want to buy a new gunner hammer, just take it off my T25, please. And mount. So, with a 100% crew, they don't have brothers in arms yet, but they're getting there. 100% crew in a rammer, it's 6.73 seconds to reload it. And it does 240 alpha damage, 320 with HE. But look at that penetration. 219 for just a standard AP. 275 because it can fire high explosive anti-tank. It's dispersion of 0.33, very accurate. Not as accurate as the 75 decently accurate, and only a two second aiming time. That means this thing can get in position, acquire target, and fire fast. Um, for equipment for this tank, I would of course go with the gun rammer, get that reload speed down, binox, and a camo net. I mean, that's just standard TD because while it does only have a 12, because it only has 350 view range, which is pretty bad for a quote-unquote open-top vehicle. But, with the binos, you can easily exceed that, and especially with the 100% commander, recon, situational awareness, all that kind of good stuff, but that you're not going to be getting those skills till later. The gun traverses only 12 degrees a second, which sounds bad, but when you consider your traverse speed and how far you're going to be usually engaging people, it's not really that much of a deal-breaker. Not to mention the gun traverse on this tank is absolutely outstanding. 30 degrees to either side, so you are you can be looking that way, to here, without moving your tank, or roughly here, and then you can move your tank and look about roughly here, without even moving the tank. So I mean, you can get a wide field of fire with this thing, and not to mention it's incredible camo, which hasn't been released, but this thing has excellent camo, and as you can see, I've gone with camo on three of them, six cents on the commander, and then I'm going to finish Brothers in Arms, get the commander with camo, because this is my T-25 crew from my American Tank Destroyers. Um, and this thing will be unspottable. I have a few games I'm going to show you guys, and I'll see you in the first replay. Alright, so here's our first replay. We have the M56 Scorpion on Malinovka, or Prokhorovka. I'm, I'm with my platoon mates, Third Guard and Ozzy, and, well, let's just say Ozzy does kind of a boo-boo, but we'll get to that later, and light tanks are worthless. So we're, I'm, in this replay, I'm going to show you exactly how to get this tank. Wait, sorry, no. There he goes. So, you know, the guy asks, how do you get the scorpion? I'm just like, does no one read the forms anymore? But, um, I'm going to show you how stealthy this little thing is. Granted, I this crew only has about 90%, 95% uh, camo at this point, and the commander's at 95% on 6 cents. 
But I do have my rammer, my binox, and my camo net. Now watch how stealthy this little tank is. So I'm going down the road of death over here um, to start off. Now as you can see, it can reach 45 kilometers extremely quickly. And even slight inclines don't even bother this thing. I mean, look at it. I'm just keeping a constant 40. So, I'm basically saying it's a stealthy E25 with less rate of fire, which it basically is. Now, watch this. I park up in this bush. Okay, so I'm going to be the scout for this entire side. Okay? So, we see an E25. I'm like, eh, I don't have a warm, fuzzy feeling about this. Uh, so, you know, I'm just sitting there. I'll let them keep firing the E25. I do not want to get spotted. Everyone behind me, moving up. Uh, I feel, uh, this is the thing I mean, I was talking about. I don't know what its camera ring is, but I feel like it's almost just as good as an E25, if not slightly better. Um, but I'm just sitting in this bush. I do not want to be spotted at all, so I'm, you know, letting the guys in the middle take care of all these people. While well, my pal third is in the square behind me, we got J Panther looking over there, we have a Ramatal Borsig. Um, complaining about the armor, well, you know, armor doesn't mean nothing if you can't find the damn thing, right? <laughs> and here's where Ozzy makes the mistake. If you notice, Ozzy is down here. And he stays there the entire game. He doesn't go up on the hill, and it kind of pisses off the T-29, but... You know, that's, that's how it goes. So, you know, we just sit and wait. We sit and wait. Because, you know, you're going to get bored on that side if nothing's coming towards you. And soon, our first person's going to pop out. There he is. It's an IS-2. I think about taking the shot, and I'm like, no. Then comes the FV. So, two heavy tanks just bumble out. And I still haven't been spotted. Look how close they're getting. They're within 100 meters. At l maybe 150. And I'm still not spotted. And then third takes a shot, gets set on fire, and that's the end of him. Sadly. Now you're wondering, why am I not firing? Well, I don't want to give my position away. All this spotting. And look how it's going. So, and then a Rotmetal Borsig appears, following the FV. It's taking fire from all sides. Gets hit. I'm still not firing. Do not want to give my position away. And there goes the FV. So, we lost one tank for, for one Scorpion. Now the Ramatal pulls up. I'll kind of watch him, and then I, I kind of was stupid here. I kind of zoom in, thinking, oh, I can zoom in, can't see him. I'm like, no, oh no. He takes a shot. I turn. And, boom. First shot. Steal that kill like a boss. Move up to the next bush. I'm not sure if that was me being spotted, or if that was just a random shot from someone. I'm not sure, because I don't have six cents. But look how quickly dispatched they were. And now they're gone. And then the Ramatal is telling me to go scout. Which, I am. As you can see, I can buy my... the, the circle indicator there. I can clearly see up to B1. I'm sitting here scouting because as soon as they break cover, I see them. The raw metal thing in scouting means just going out up there. No. S I'm sitting in a bush waiting for them to break cover. As soon as they break cover, I will see them. I break cover, he sees me. So we'll sit here and then the raw metal decides, well, fuck it. You're being useless. I'm going to move up. And it's going to cost him. 
We do have an AMX ELC. He gets hit. He takes a random shot, not knowing exactly where he got hit from. See that? Oh, and there's the scorpion. He takes one shot from the Ramatal, and I shoot him through multiple layers in concealment, and he doesn't even know I'm here. So we just wait for the reload, and... gone. So, just like that, gone. And here's where they start, you know, not really enjoying what Ozzy had to do. He does kill one person, though. He does kill that Indian Panzer, which I'm very happy he did, because that opened up. For me to do something. Now, I kind of sit here for a little too long, kind of debating my next move. Um, but then I notice, you know, base is in trouble. So we're going to go down there. I'm going to take care of that. So yeah, I'm heading back to the base to defend. There's the Indian Panzer at 84 one health. He's gone. Ozzy killed him. And then he's dead by the Scorpion. Now, where's that Panzer? There he is. I can't... Uh, I don't want to take that shot. I was most likely spotted by the way he was looking. Day Panther fires and misses. I'm waiting, I'm wait I think and then the J Panther kills him, so I'm like, okay, sweet. So I have a J Panther out on my back. Move up a bit. And then the T thirty four kills him. So I'm like, well, Fuck. Time to put this thing's camo to even more use. So he tells me Scorp's full, T-34 is almost dead. Great news. So I move up. Find a bush. Find I was up. Not seeing nothing. Move up to the next bush. And there he is. Fire. That's one out of the cap circle, but I still have one to go. Move back. I'm like, oh, shit, that's a bush in front of me. Can't see through that. So I move up. And then here's where I almost throw the game. Just watch. Okay, so I'm scanning, I'm scanning. I'm like, hmm, he's probably in that bush. You know, thinking about it, you know. I'm like, uh... Do I take the shot? Do I take the shot? Do I take the shot? They start urging me to go. I'm just like, well, nothing's popping up. Gotta get him spotted. So here we go. I go. I break cover. He fires. But thanks to me going down, I dodge it. And now he's behind that. He's moving. I'm like, well, shit, I don't have a shot here. So I'm gonna move up and use this thing's excellent 10 degrees of gun depression and all I can see is his gun shield that's all he's giving me is that little piece of gun shield hit it now load HE move back aim hit him with a HE shell he's just gonna sit there and take another one okay and finish him off and there we go Post battle results. Um, I don't have them. Uh, I don't have them with me now. But as you can see, 1,500 damage. And if I can find it here, because I do have it. Because um, for some reason, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll show you the post game results. So here are the results of that battle from what replays. First class tanker badge and defender medal. We go to the team score. Sort by XP. No surprise. Top of the team. But nowhere near in damage because I was more of a passive. The Yag Panther. 
gets that. But the high caliber went to that T-34 too. And a top gun. Feel bad for that guy. Great game. It's the detail report. 1,500 damage, 7 shots, 7 hits, 7 penetrations. Took 2 hits, 2 penetrations from that. 2 vehicles spotted. 26, 16 spotting damage. And made a 68,000 profit. Now the second replay I'm going to show you is someone that really, really had a good game. The Scorpion. I'll see you for it. Alright, so our second match that I want to show you. We have a, how do I pronounce this, Speedway Stall Gorgzow from the EU server. And look at this matching tier 7s across the board. Tiger, 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 a shit ton of tigers. And now this guy, he has a game. <laughs> he has a game. Game. Let me tell you what. Like, you think I did well for my my spotting and camo? He, this guy's gonna show you what this gun is capable of doing. And as and as you notice, though, he doesn't have camo on his tank. And as you know, putting personal camo on the tank actually increases as its camo rating, and that's on an assault map. So, how well can this thing do in a heavy tier 7 heavy tank match on an assault map? Well, he's about to show you. I mean, this chap, you're going to go ahead and get up on this hill to provide overwatch shots. And the SU-152, chugging behind. Moving up. He does not have binos. Yo, he is using a large repair kit and a meat and a small repair kit with a large first aid kit. He moves in. We're going to go into fix camera, see what he sees. He's just going to go ahead and sit behind to cover while the chaffy the heavies move up. <sighs> Sorry about that, a little t late tonight. So, VK3001P and T34-1. Pretty, oh, no, an IS-2's been spotted. And the heavy should easily just go through. And here comes the gunfire from the hidden tank destroyers from the enemy base. So the 1 2 line is pushing hard. The AB line, not so much. And now the 1 2 line has a T 29. His first target, Tiger One, shooting behind cover where it's where it's not visible. Remember, if you can see through it, you lose camo rating. If you can't see through it, it gives you a lot more camo rating. And just watch him put this gun to work. Takes a blind shot. Pretty sure that hit. I don't know what's up with the replay. It's a replay bug. Sets him on fire. That looks like an automatic fire extinguisher. Bounced. It's like, where the hell are these shots coming in? And he just keeps laying into this Tiger P, and the Tiger P's gone. It's just like that. He now has 1,200 damage. Now he sees another Tiger 1. He waits, he waits. Plants one right into his side. Aiming for that uh, ammo rack that's right un along the side underneath the turret. And just making this gun sing. I mean, these guys don't even know he's here. They're saying they have zero chance. That hit, that definitely hit. 
Now he's waiting for him to pop up again. Takes a speculative shot from the last known position where that KB3 was. And bounces. As you can tell by my mod here, let me pull it up a little bit more. They're just outside the render range, which is that big red square on the map. You see KB3, puts another one, tracks him. So he's going to go ahead, just put another shot. That one hit. You saw no splash behind the thing. Is he still there? Eh, that looked like it. IS2. IS. He's going for the IS. Now the IS is like, where the fuck am I getting shot from? He backs up behind cover. Now because he's firing through the tree and he can see through it, he's losing his camo value, but there's nothing close to spot him. So he can do this with pure impunity and just making this gun sing. I mean, that, that flink's pretty much done, by the way. I mean, if you look at the map, his team's just gone. And, I mean, he's just pouring shot after shot after shot into these heavy tanks. You see, he's quickly running out of supplies. And that's another thing I forgot to mention. The... The M56 only carries 34 shots of ammunition. So, if you're doing what he's doing and just... Sh shot after shot after shot after shot you're going to run out of ammo there's that KB3 again oh and he's running two second aim time you ain't going nowhere so he's done all he wanted from the from the hill so he's gonna start moving up T150's down Chaffee's dead. And now the T-34 is running. Oh, or not. He's saying a fight. Plants a shot straight into him. He misses. And we're also wondering why the guns sound much better. is because I run Gnome Father's sound mod. Best mod in the game. Puts in there, plants another shot into that T-34, and this T-34 has no chance of surviving. He, he's done. He can take a shot. And there goes the T-34. And that's game. So let me show you the end results of that match. So, of course, no surprise, that's an ace tanker badge. Bruiser, that high caliber tank tanker sniper 107,000 credits and 2,000 experience undoubled we look at the team score 5,000 damage I, I mean who didn't he shoot he damaged 6 vehicles destroyed 4 of them 29 shots fired 26 hits, 24 penetrations. 5,000 damage. Top of the team. And look at, and look at that. 94,000 credit. This is just remarkable. And all because he used the gun from long range, from an excellent support position, and kept it singing. So question is, is it worth it? Well, yes. I feel the M56 Scorpion is 100% worth the money. This thing can sing. It can be stealthy. It's an excellent little money... I wouldn't say excellent money maker, but it's a great money maker. 
not as good as a tier 8, of course, because tier 8 premiums get a higher credit coefficient. But if you like the E25 but felt underwhelmed with the gun due to its low penetration, look no further than the M56 Scorpion. Right now it's on sale for, about, I think, 10 more days. Or 7 more days. For $50 with the bundle, sadly. 30 days premium, 6,500 gold. I'm actually giving, doing a giveaway for it right now. Whoever can send me the replay with the most damage done in the T18. This is supposed to be for the AJSA group, but I haven't really gotten a lot of people doing it so far. To Skylar.Symes at Yahoo.com, I'll put it in the description, will win an M56 Scorpion. I will put a link in the description to the page where it's talked about, and I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Until then, have fun, guys.